continue a little bit with the wider introduction, not too long. Uh, and then after that, we will have two rounds of uh, presentations, uh, starting with Walter Sahel, and then secondly, uh, Hans Christian Ebel from uh, the Europe European Commission. And it might be that he's just driving in with a taxi. He just called me at the train station. So he, he will be here quite soon. Caroline van Hemel from the Utrecht Sustainability Institute. That's the first round. There will be short presentations and some time for uh, uh, general questions and discussion. And then the second round, we have Kuno van Geet sitting over here from the Dutch Ministry uh, of Infrastructure and Water uh, Management at Rijkswaterstaat, part of it. Uh, and um, we have Michael Krishna, uh, who just entered and sitting in the back still. And uh, Walter Tobé from Canon uh, Europe. And the idea is, in the morning we will have presentations and some wider discussion, and in the afternoon we create a different room, and there will be shorter pitches, so everybody will be able to talk with each of the presenters, except for Caroline van Hemel, who has other uh, obligations uh, in the second half of the day. But we will enable very detailed discussions, and there is a program for that, which I will explain a bit later during the day. Um, so what are our challenges for the people that already were here? This represents the rusty old linear economy. And uh, there was a little joke to this. This is actually one of the, the R's, the uh, value retention R's, because it is a repurposing. It's a tourist attraction in, uh, in Bolivia. But it, we can also do it more scientifically, and then we get this kind of presentations of the linear model. And we had uh, quite a lot of discussions in the past already about the more complex system that uh, we tried to change uh, based on uh, articles written at Copernicus Institute as well which identify some of the challenges uh, and challenges that we would uh, <coughs> put on the table here are partly about this uh, very diverse uh, definition and uh, conceptualization of what is needed and all the all the, the, the cacophonia that is resulting from that. So part of the work we do here is uh, addressing that. Another challenge is that what has been done in the last two, three, four uh, decades is very much oriented towards mass recycling and creating mass systems. And we're not so sure of what actually happens after that with it. It would, did not get so much attention to R0 and the R1, the refuse, reduce, changing lifestyles and these kind of uh, topics. Another observation is that we see a lot of new kind of businesses, intermediaries, new, new actors playing new roles which we need to understand and which actually could improve their performance in a way. So this is something uh, very interesting. Then there is under the new circular economy three, a lot of attention of creating new business models. It's also in our, in our program but I tend to challenge this a little bit, because if we talk about new business models, we sort of rely on the market being able to solve the issues. And if you zoom out a bit from the specific uh, supply chains and the specific circles that you might create, you need to zoom out to see what is actually achievable. And I think Ernst already made a little bit of a remark on this, about his 100% uh, recycling uh, um, ambition if that's really uh, uh, possible and of course that what has been achieved in the last couple of uh, decades we need to understand it better and see how we can further improve that so that those are a couple of the observations of earlier presentations uh, or uh, publications we made interesting also is to see that there are very big differences this is a picture from the uh, european environmental agency showing the recycle rates in parts of Europe and you see a, a green line growing through the middle of Europe and that's where the recycle rates or the collection rates are very high and the other parts are far larger so we have different speeds in what we are achieving and interestingly uh, these are some very recent figures about the collection rates of various waste streams in the Netherlands and the collection rates are more than 100% 104, 110, which is a funny thing, but that has to do with the fact that in calculating this, we compare the current production or sales of a certain material 
with what is collected, but that what was collected was of course sold 10 or 15 years before. So there can be this kind of things. And maybe there's import or whatever. But still, the recycle <coughs> rates are also at 80, 90 percent. But there's quite some issues about what we do with this. What kind of recycling do we actually uh, achieve? So, interesting challenges. At the other hand, since circular economy was framed again, we see a lot of new energy, a lot of new projects. Uh, cities are competing to be the best circular city or region or whatever. And, uh, so in the Netherlands we have these websites of all the showcases. Uh, there's also this, this is a more European website with uh, a large number of showcases of circular economy nowadays. So they can be a, a breeding ground for what we want to do. And actually uh, that one, I took this from the, the National Dutch Marketing. <laughs> they have all kinds of uh, ways to show how good the Netherlands is. And this is one of them. Uh, saying that the Dutch, indeed, the Dutch policy is to be circular by 2050. It's a bit strange as a marketeer that you sell something that you are going to be good in 31 years. <laughs> That's quite funny, but they, they put that uh, advertisement in many magazines, etc. So, wh where are we now? Uh, Pauline explained the structure of the, of the program with the five work packages. Um, we have uh, 50 bright PhDs, very eager, we experience it daily in our own host universities, but also these days over here together, uh, coming from five countries, eight universities, and the setup of the project is interdisciplinary, also transdisciplinary, so this is also the setup for today, we want to meet people from practice with longer experience, uh, and the key questions for today are listening to the experienced uh, practitioners and uh, scholars. What do we already know is not so very interesting. Of course, most interesting is what are the knowledge gaps? Which are the, thi which are the things that we are really struggling with after a couple of decades of circular economy 0 or 1.0, 2.0? .0, what is the key thing for 3.0? And how can we still take this maybe uh, into our own plans, the draft research proposals that we have? Um, so what kind of knowledge is most needed? And that's why I invited uh, people, scholars, people from government, people from the markets, uh, and people experienced in doing things with the market and the, and, and the government in this, this set. So still, the question is also how can our PhDs, how can you, the 15 over here, uh, supply the best type of knowledge? We can make this a two-directional thing. It's not just asking the experts what do we need to bring, but also how can we bring our, our lessons in the coming years back to the market, to the government, in the most effective way. So this is what we will work on. Uh, later on uh, during the day in the smaller individual talks. <coughs>